Hey guys, back here with Tua for another video. Update, pup date time, 25 months. Tua is uh, two years and one month old this week. And if you're new to this channel, I do this type of video every single month on my Bull Mastiff Tua, just to give you guys an update on how life is going with him. Uh, this channel is kind of everything Bull Mastiff. This type of video is my update style video where I just kind of go over um, the same few main topics and let you guys know how he's progressing with those. And I've been doing this style video ever since pretty much the first day that I brought him home. So there's a great log of information for anybody interested in the Bull Mastiff breed. Um, how they go ahead and progress as they age, whether it's growth or anything like that. And I also do a, just a bunch of other miscellaneous types of videos about the Bull Mastiff breed as well on this channel. But uh, like I said, this is the update style video. And if you are interested in the Bull Mastiff breed, go ahead, stick around, and check out all my other videos as well. So normally I like to get these videos started with any sort of big change throughout the month that I feel is notable. Um, and it was honestly kind of a, a slow month here for us. There was no big massive changes to really tell you guys about. Um, so we'll just go ahead and get right into growth like we normally do. That's the first topic we usually hit on in this style video. And last month at two years old, Tua was 161 pounds. And now this month, um, at 25 months old, he is also still 161 pounds. And this is significant because this is only the second time, I believe, ever since we've brought him home that there has been no change in his weight um, as far as gaining goes. Um, I don't know what I would chalk this up to exactly. Um, these dogs are supposed to grow until they're between the age of two and three. And when I say grow, I mean as far as continuing to pack um, pack the pounds on. Uh, I would anticipate that he's not completely finished growing. I think this is just um, a sign of things to come that growth is definitely slowing, which is uh, pretty normal. He is over the age of two now. That growth should be slowing down. It will be slowing down. Um, I would anticipate at 26 months, you know, a month from now, that he will have packed on another pound, possibly two. But I, I think this is kind of foreshadowing, a sign of things to come, that this growth is going to start to slow down. And uh, we'll see where he ends up completely. But yeah, I mean, that's pretty significant. Only the second time ever that he hasn't gained weight uh, month to month or when I did these a long time ago, week to week. Food is the next thing that I will touch on. If you guys are regular viewers of this channel, you know I uh, do a combination of kibble and raw food. And uh, this month, I actually fed a lot of full raw meals, um, just kind of experimenting with that. I, I don't know that I'll continue that per se, but uh, we ended up doing a lot of full raw this, this month with no kibble. Um, actually kind of ran out of one of his bags of kibble and then didn't go and get one for a little while. So just kind of experimented with full raw, but uh, normally we would do, you know, about an 80 to 90% raw meat and uh, 10 to 20 percent kibble so he's pretty much already almost at full raw but uh, raw feeding is just a really great thing that you can do for your bull mastiff uh, for your dog in general regardless of breed uh, it's it's really great for their coats their skin uh, digestive system all all kinds of things I would just encourage you guys to do your own research on raw feeding and how it can be good for the dog see if it's a good fit for you and your dog it is a little bit more expensive to do raw feeding versus um, a high quality kibble but I would say not you know crazy 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 expensive compared to a high quality kibble it is probably crazy expensive compared to a low quality kibble but uh, as with most things you're gonna get what you pay for and uh, it's it's just 
it's a great thing that you can do for the dog. gives gives them lots of vitamins, nutrients, minerals, and stuff that they wouldn't normally get through their kibble, at least in a more natural form. Um, I kind of always compare it to it's kind of feeding yourself processed garbage all day or, you know, actually good whole foods. Um, but we can't always do that uh, as people, and we can't always do that with our, with our uh, animals and dogs either. So just try and find a balance, I guess, and do your own research and do whatever you feel is best. But I definitely love raw feeding, and I think, I think it's great for the dog. Socialization is the next thing that we'll touch on. Um, kind of a slower month for socialization, which is, you know, kind of how it is for us here in North Dakota in the winter. We can't really get them out for many walks because it's so cold. Um, but we, with the holidays and stuff, we did have, you know, a number of people over, most of them who were familiar to Tua. Um, he absolutely loves people. He absolutely loves any dogs that he's ever encountered. And socialization, like I always hit on in these videos, is the number one thing that I personally feel you can do to set yourself and your dog up for success. You need to turn this into a part-time job when you bring this puppy home, like I always say. And uh, you will end up with a, a great dog that's not scared of you know any or, or most situations and uh, is great with people, great with animals. And uh, just simple things like take them everywhere with you when, when they're a puppy. Expose them to different sights, sounds, smells, uh, animals, people, anything you can think of. And uh, just really, really, really harp on that, that you want to get them socialized as early and often as possible. Because when this dog is a you know, 120 plus pound dog, you're going to want them used to all situations. Energy is the next thing we'll touch on. Bull Mastiffs are definitely known to be on the lazier side, and Tua is 100% falling in line with that. I would say most of every day and most days, he is pretty chill. He's sleeping, he's laying, he's chewing. He still has times where his energy levels are high throughout the day, but I'd say you know 80% of the day, he's pretty laid back and pretty chill. Now, when you bring this puppy home that first year to year and a half, this is not going to be the case. They're gonna be a normal puppy. Um, so if you are interested in getting a bull mastiff, just realize that when you bring them home, they are gonna have energy because they're a young little puppy. But by the time they hit two years old like Tua, you are gonna have what I would consider to be a pretty lazy dog, depending on what type of dog breed you're used to. Um, and, and that's good, I mean, if that's what you're looking for. Now, as far as being lazy, I will say even to this, uh, to this day, to this age that Tua is at, he'll still run around in the backyard, he'll still do sprints, he'll still go on a mile or two mile walk as long as it's, you know, not 90 degrees plus outside. He can still do it, but he'll be very, very slow. So you can still go ahead and do um, things with this dog to exercise them, exercise yourself, but they're not going to be able to keep up like if it was a you know a labrador or a german shepherd or a doberman pincher or you know a, some sort of bird dog something that has a lot more energy um but if you are looking for a lazy dog that will eventually fit into that mold of being a lazy dog a bull mastiff might be for you drooling is the next thing that we'll touch on and uh drooling is one thing that seems to always come up when people are doing research about a bull mastiff how much do they drool how significant is it? Do I want to deal with this if I'm if I get one? And uh, I would I would say if you're used to having big dogs of of any breed, you know something that's around 100 pounds, you're going to be familiar with some sort of drooling level. And I would say the transition to a bull mastiff who is going to be more than that wouldn't be that big of a deal because when you have a big dog, you're used to the drooling at least around a water dish in general. And that's kind of for the most part where most of the drooling is done by a bull mastiff. It's around food and water. And I'd say 90% of it is around that. And you know when that's going to happen. And you just clean it up as you go or feed and water outside. Um, they also do have drooling situations if it's hot and they're panting, they're exercising. Um, if they're smelling food, things like that, but it, it's not like crazy significant. And if that's one of the main things holding you back from getting a bull mastiff, I would encourage you to look past that. You fall in line pretty quick. Um, 
kind of getting used to it and knowing when those things are, when the drooling is going to be happening. And uh, you, you just kind of make it a part of your routine to have a rag or paper towel or whatever around. And it's honestly not that big of a deal, at least in my opinion, especially if you're used to having big dogs in general and, and kind of the, the mess that can come with them. Um, but yeah, it's definitely there too as a drooler. But they definitely don't just sit there and drool all day, guys. There, there has to be some sort of stimulant that's making them drool. They don't just wake up in the morning and, and drool from the moment they wake up to the moment they go to bed. So not a massive, massive deal, but it's definitely there and definitely something to consider. But I think it's uh, a bigger deal is made of drool than needs to be, in my opinion. Barking is the last thing that we'll touch on. Bull Mastiffs are known as a silent watchdog. And uh, Tua, for the most part, has kind of fallen right into that. There is just the one situation, which I bring up every single uh, video, that the only time that he really barks is when he's in our backyard and kind of alone in our backyard for the most part. We have a big fence that's uh, like a big panel, so he can't see on the other side of that. And when he's hearing noises or dogs barking in the distance, something like that, he will let out barks. But other than that, there's pretty much no situation that he barks. He is silent beyond when he's kind of alone in our backyard hearing noises on the other side of the fence. So he's definitely falling in, in line with being a silent watchdog. Um, and like I've speculated many times in these videos in the past, I just think it's because he can't really see what's going on on the other side of that fence. And it's never for you know an extended period of time, a minute, maybe two minutes tops of just letting out warning barks or whatever you would call it. And uh, he's, he's pretty much done and we go out there and you know tell him be quiet or whatever. But indoors, no barking. Um, if he is in like, my mom has a lake place and she has a fence around that place and he's able to see through that fence what's on the other side and there, he never barks out there. I, I really truly believe it's just the fact that our big paneled fence in the backyard, he cannot see what's on the other side and he's curious. Uh, but yeah, so if you're looking for a dog that in general, there's going to be an exception to every rule, but in general is not much of a barker, a bull mastiff might also be for you. Uh, that's all I have guys for the 25 month update pup date video. If you stuck around and watched the whole thing, really do appreciate it. Uh, hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody had a good uh, holiday season and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.